Knowing the voice of God for yourself. A very important teaching today. Because certain people today are chasing the prophetic. And I think some of them have gone off balance with that. We need the prophetic. But how do we hear the voice of God for ourselves? So thank you for being with me today. Let's pray. Let's ask the Lord to guide us here and just take over this half hour and let him speak to all of us. Precious Jesus, thank you for your word. I pray today, Lord, that you will speak to our hearts so clearly, so beautifully. And Lord, I pray that you will use each one here today who is listening to be a blessing to so many. To you be all the glory and the praise. And God's people said amen and amen. And thank you, sweet people of God, for being with me. So today, the prophetic, I think, in some circles, have gone a little off balance. Today, people are seeking the prophetic way more than they need to. Even though we need the prophetic, we need the Agabus to come and say to, like Paul the Apostle, here's what's coming, so prepare for it, and so on. But I have found, through Colossians and other portions of the Word, that you and I can hear God for ourselves, but there's a secret here. There's a key. There's a real secret here. And knowing the voice of God. Listen, I have been in ministry over 48 years, and I've, I've had moments when I really had to hear God. I mean, I had to know now. I couldn't wait till someone heard for me, because sometimes when somebody hears for you is not hearing the same message you want to hear. All right, verse 9. For this cause, Colossians 1, verse 9, because in this is contained the real heart of it the real clear secret, the real answer. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. So I'm going to go right through verse 14 because in this is contained a beautiful message. Strengthen with all might, according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long-suffering, with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in life. So, Knowing the voice of God, knowing the will of God, is more than learning some techniques <clears throat> for guidance or applying certain principles to know what is God saying or looking for another word. It's so sad, you know, I've seen people, I've heard about people that are always looking for a word because they're not hearing it for themselves. And we all, you know, need to hear God's voice for ourselves really and we need to hear it often i need it often in my own life and heart and you do too but we don't always need someone to tell us what god is saying we can hear god for ourselves and i think what what this says to us is we need to think less about gifts and methods and so on and more about relationships relationship with Jesus. Our relationship with the, with the Lord is the real key here. For this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, verse 9, Colossians 1 says, to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding that you might walk worthy of the Lord. Now, God Almighty in Exodus 13, 21 said to Israel, he said, listen, all you have to do is follow me. I will take you to the promised land. You just follow me. And the reason I'm dealing with this today, and I've dealt with it some in the past, is because some people don't really fully understand the prophetic. The prophetic has four different realms. 
There is number one, the prophecy of scripture, which we need all the time, you and I. And that's the Bible. So God speaks to us through his word. Number two, there is the office of a prophet. We still need that, of course, like an Agabus. Then there is the, the atmosphere of the prophetic. There's the atmosphere of the prophetic, which we see in 1 Samuel 19, which is called the spirit of prophecy, by the way, in Revelation. And that is the atmosphere where the, the anointing is flowing and God speaks to his people and so on. And then number four, there's the gift of prophecy. But there's a border around all these called redemption. Redemption. And anything outside redemption is not the Lord. When people want to know things about things that have nothing to do with their redemption, they're going outside the scriptures, outside the will of God, outside the voice of God. And that's where people get in trouble. But it all must be within the borders of redemption. So when, whenever uh, uh, like God speaks through someone prophetically, ask yourself, what has this got to do with my redemption? If it is within redemption, it's God. If it's outside redemption, it's not the Lord. And also, it must also have three results. Edification, exhortation, comfort. Does it edify you? Does it build you up? Does it exhort you? Does it encourage you? Does it comfort you, give you peace? If it doesn't, dismiss it. The only way I know, really, uh, for me to hear God continually is by, by developing my relationship with him, by staying close to the Lord continually. Because relationship is the key. And I think, now, this may upset somebody uh, when, when I say this. I think when, when you see people seeking a word here, a word, a word, give me a word, give me a word, it's because they're living in disobedience. You cannot hear from God if you're living in disobedience. Do you remember 1 Samuel, uh, uh, what, what it says in 1 Samuel about Saul? Let go, let's go to 1 Samuel 28, and let's look at verse 5 and on. It says, when Saul saw the host of the Philistines, he was afraid and his heart greatly trembled. And there are times when people need a, a word because they're so scared of what, what's going to happen. It says, when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord did not answer him, answered him not, neither by dreams, nor by Urim, nor by prophets. Then it says, said Saul unto his servants, seek me a woman that hath a familiar spirit. Watch this, the man is living in disobedience. So God cannot speak to anyone who is living in disobedience, even by prophets. You won't hear the voice of God if you're living in disobedience. Yeah, you may, you may get a word, but that's not from God. It says, when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not by dreams or by Urim, which the high priest wore on his chest, or by prophets. Then said Saul, seek me a woman that has a familiar spirit, that I may go to her and inquire of her and then, of course, he disguises himself in verse 8. And then he goes to this woman and says, Divine unto me by the familiar spirit, bring me him up whom I will name unto thee. And the woman said unto him, Behold, thou knowest that Saul has done what he has done by basically saying anyone involved in witchcraft ought to be killed. And he swore to her, he gave her his promise, he will not kill her. At that time, she didn't know he was, he was the king. Then later, she found out he was the king in verse 11 when she called up uh, Samuel. And it says she, she cried and so forth. But then when, when, when Samuel talks to him, he says this in verse 15. He said, why did you disquiet me to bring me up? And Saul said, because I'm sore distressed. The, Philist the Philistines are making war against me. God has left me. 
and he answers me no more, neither by prophets or dreams. So now I want to know what you're saying. Wow. Here he's seeking a familiar a woman with a familiar spirit because the Lord is not answering him. I'm going to be bold here. Some, some, not all, some of these individuals that people call prophets have a familiar spirit. They operate in the psychic, some of them. They're not operating by the Lord's Holy Spirit because they're dealing with, with things that are not biblical, that go outside the line of redemption. And here's Saul seeking someone because God is not talking to him anymore. And the Bible is very, very clear. The reason people cannot hear from God, the, the reason they, some of them are so desperate for a word is because, well, Psalm 66 verse 18 is quite clear on why. It says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. The Lord will not hear me. He'll not answer me. Even through a, pro, a prophetic gift, he'll not answer you. I'm, listen, listen. I'm talking to you like this because I really care for you as the church, as God's precious people. We need to really develop our relationship with the Lord himself, get close to the Lord himself. Listen, I have faced moments when I needed to hear from God but because of the fact that I, I, I look to him, God has spoken to me through dreams as recently as a week ago. And God will speak to you, I promise you. He will really speak to you. You will not need to be looking for a word from someone out there. You know, a lot of times you don't even remember what they tell you. You have to write it down or tape it so you can remember it. If it's really God, you'll remember it. You won't need to tape it. You won't need to tell someone or ask someone, what did they say, you know, say it again. No, no. Prophecy, how can you be, how can you be edified if you don't, if, if, if you don't remember what, what they said? So prophecy is for edification, exhortation, and comfort. And all these three are combined in memory. How can I be edified if I don't remember what the, what the, what the individual said? How can I be encouraged and exhorted if I don't remember anything of what they said? Or how can I be comforted if I don't remember? So if you forget what someone says to you, it's not the Lord, because the voice of God cannot be forgotten. You can't forget it. Look, I've had prophecies given to me over, over the years by real prophets, okay, by real men and women of God. I still remember them to this day. Years ago, years ago. When I had Otto Roberts giving me a word, Bill Hammond gave me a word, Kathy Lechner gave me a word, Ruth Heflin gave me a word, and I still remember what they said because they spoke from heaven. It was the real word of the Lord, not something you forget. Would you know there was, there was a man in Jerusalem, Jan Willem van der Hoeven was his name, who, who gave me a word back in the 70s. I still remember it to this day. That word gives me tremendous strength, tremendous encouragement, tremendous comfort. And even if that word, you know, is not fulfilled for a while, you still remember it and you know God will bring it to pass. I was sitting in Paris one time with a man, and you know what? A lot of these people don't even call themselves prophets. Those who know the voice of God don't even call themselves prophets. A man sat with me in a restaurant in Paris and gave me a word. He was a, he was a missionary in Egypt, a missionary in Egypt that gave me such a clear word. And I'm telling you, to this day, I can tell you everything he said to me because it was of the Holy Spirit. If it's not the Holy Spirit, you, you will forget it. So let me ask you a question. Do you remember that prophecy that you heard from someone who gave it to you? If you do, then God really spoke to them. If you don't, it's not the Lord. It's not the Lord. So it's asking the Lord to fill you. And what Paul said in Colossians is so powerful. 
Let's, let's go back to it for just a second because you will see the results here of the, of the prophetic so beautifully. So he says, for this cause, let's just go back to verse 9 and on. For this cause, since the day we heard it, don't cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will. That's relationship. In all wisdom, so no confusion, no, am I supposed to do this? Because now you have wisdom and spiritual understanding. I mean, this says to me that you'll never need someone to tell you what God is telling, what God is saying to you, because you're going to have total knowledge, total wisdom, and spiritual understanding. And when this happens, this, this happens, then verse 10 happens, that you might walk worthy of the Lord, you know, to be filled uh, in verse 9 means to be ruled by his will. So when Paul wrote and said that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will, that uh, the Greek says that you might be ruled by the knowledge of his will. I think that's awesome. And then you will walk worthy of the Lord. And then you'll be pleasing to the Lord, verse 10. Then you'll be fruitful in everything you do. And then you'll increase in the knowledge of the Lord because of relationship. It's all about Jesus. It's all about knowing the Lord, the depth of his heart. You know, I'm speaking to you today uh, uh, just as real as I can be with you. I have seen people damaged by what is called the prophetic. What is called the prophetic. One of my dearest partners, who's still one of my partners, a dear lady, one time years ago in Atlanta, when I didn't know all of this, okay, a certain prophet was there who gave her her bank account. I mean, he gave her details about her very private information. And she came to me, she said, why would God expose me like that? Why would God show him information I don't want anyone to know? And this is when I said, you know, something is wrong here. This is not prophetic. Because the prophetic does not expose you to danger and harm. So when they tell you, well, here's your phone number. Why? So someone can call me? Here's your bank account. So someone can hack it? Come on, please. God never exposes us to harm. So when, when someone gives you information that nobody is to know publicly, then you say, no, stop, stop, stop right here. This, is not, this, this has nothing to do with the prophetic. It becomes psychic, frankly. It becomes psychic. And that's why I tell you, you have to ask, what has this got to do with my redemption? So when people say, well, so-and-so will be president, what has this got to do with my redemption? So-and-so will be uh, the president of such and such a company. What is this got to do with my redemption? The Bible is all about redemption. I know the Bible. Now, I know that some will disagree with me, but it doesn't matter what people think. Whenever the Lord spoke about Babylon, its rise and fall, or about Assyria, or about Egypt, or about Moab, or Edom, or any of the, of the, of the nations in Bible days, it had to do with its plan of redemption for his people Israel. For Israel. When, when God spoke about Cyrus, when he spoke about Cyrus coming on the throne, it was about the fact he will help rebuild the, the temple, and it had to do with God's plan of redemption. So when people say, well, you know, uh, so-and-so is going to be president of this country, uh, and I say, well, what has this got to do with God's plan of redemption? Well, so God can bless America. or Well, yeah, but how about India? How about China? How about somebody who doesn't know what's going on in this country? So it's kind of nonsense when they tell you, well, God has shown me so-and-so is going to be president of this country. Okay, what has this got to do with that believer living uh, in Brazil or in somewhere else around the world that doesn't know anything about politics of whatever country? Redemption for the whole church, that's the key. The God's plan of redemption. If it's outside redemption, it's not the word of the Lord. That's all there is to it. So when someone says, 
I, there's a card, and that, that's happened. Look, look, years ago, I had those guys come to, to our meeting. No more, because I saw the damage they did. I saw the pain they caused in people's lives. And sadly, people still run after them. They want a word, they, they want one word. It's, it's just become too much, and everybody today is a prophet. So sad. No, no, biblically speaking, that's not the way it is. Real prophets, real prophets are recognized by the whole body of Christ. Not just a few people in a small church somewhere. Okay. And just because somebody may know something about somebody. No, no, no. It's knowing Jesus. It's, it's hearing his voice that matters. It's knowing his voice daily. We need to hear God's voice every single day of our life. Not just once every so often. We need to hear his voice daily to survive, to survive. Things hear us all the time. Things come against us all the time. We have problems with this and that all the time. We need to hear from God for ourselves. And the key is relationship. Getting to know the Lord himself. And I'm going to tell you, you will never know him without knowing his word. I'm going to get really straight with you and raw. Read the Bible. Read God's word, and you won't need these prophets to, to come and tell you what God is saying, you know, because God speaks through his word. Yes, all right, we need the prophetic at times, like Agabus. We, we know, I'm not denying we need the prophetic. Come on. All I'm saying is, if you don't know the Bible, if you don't know the word, you'll never hear God's voice, even if, if somebody tells you what God is saying, which, he, you know, in that case, it won't even be God speaking. Because anyone living in, in, in disobedience cannot hear God. Cannot hear God. So get to know the Lord through his word. And I told you already, God's word triggers relationship. Delivers us from sin. Psalm 119, verse 1, 2, and 3. When you walk in the law of the Lord, you will do no iniquity and you will Call upon him. It's all there. Read it. Psalm 119, verse 1, 2, and 3. It says it. If the word is in me, prayer will be born and sin will be gone. Quite simple. You live a holy life and fellowship with God will be restored all through the word of God. Give the Lord the time. Spend time with him. Sit in his presence daily for at least half an hour. And then build it to an hour. And maybe even more than that. Give the Lord at least that time to begin with. And then go to an hour a day. You will, uh, it will change your life. You won't need to be getting words here or words there. Because God will talk to you for himself daily. To tell you what to do. I had a situation only a few days ago. God spoke to me in a dream. In a dream so clearly. And God will do the same for you. I want to pray with you right now. Come on, let's stretch, stretch your hands towards me. I'm stretching my hands and my heart towards you. And I'm going to ask God to just bring you to that place in your relationship with him where you will, you, you will hear his voice. Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that your wonderful child, your people, will hear your voice by developing that precious relationship with you. Lord, clear up the fog, please. Remove all the clouds. Let the sun shine again on their life. Bring clarity to your will and your way in their life. That they'll know what to do, Lord. If someone right now, Lord, is seeking some guidance, oh, precious Jesus, reveal to them what to do. Through your blessed word as they come to know you. For your glorious name's sake. And God's people said, Amen. And no, no, uh, opening your Bibles and doing this doesn't work either. <laughs> Just get to know the Lord. Just spend, um, I promise you, if you'll spend time with, with, with the Lord just for the next three days, just for three days, every day, just spend a good hour with Him and put some worship on and read your Bible, He will talk to you like that. You will know exactly what God wants you to do, and what answer he's giving you. It's that simple. All right. God love to you.
Oh my, my, my. All right, now it's time to give to the Lord's work. And you know I was gonna ask you because I do. Because without your, your, your help, I can't do this. I had one of the most amazing services recently, in fact, just last week, in Canada, in Toronto. I'm back to Canada now. Oh, it was thousands of, pe of people that came. Tremendous healings, tremendous things took place. And then I ministered at a, an all Arabic conference. They flew in from around the world. They came from Egypt, from Syria, from other parts of the Arab world. It was incredible, incredible. And I'm now invited, by the way. They, they want me to go to the Arab world, so in God's good time, I will. But I'm telling you, the Lord just did amazing things, and it's because of your help, because of seed your, seeds you're sowing that I can do this again. So I'm traveling again, more than I did a little while ago, and now there's more and more invitations coming, just incredible amounts, in fact. And I will be traveling because I'm loving it. I'm just loving it. I love seeing God's people blessed like we just saw a few days ago. But when you give, you help me stay with you daily like this and traveling and ministering to, to God's people everywhere. I was speaking to a pastor. I'm going to Poland, God willing, this year, this year. So many people that have left the Ukraine now are in Poland. I was talking to Pastor Henry in, in Kiev, and he was telling about the growth of his church, even in the war right now, even in the war. This last Sunday, he had uh, 5,500 people in his church, even during the war. He said more people are getting saved now in the Ukraine than ever before. So God is really doing amazing things in them. And a lot of their people now have moved to Poland. So there's people now, a lot of Ukrainians are in Poland, so I'm going to Warsaw, God willing, in October. This October, I'm, I'm going to be in Portugal, I'm going to be in Poland, I'm going to be in Israel. It's going to be a wonderful time. And, and there's a lot of trips coming up even before that. But I need your help, and I'm asking you to sow seed so we can keep ministering to the world today the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we're translating, I told you that, what I'm doing to, like you know, daily in other languages. You'll be soon seeing it, I promise you. So will you sow seed today? And let's just bless the work of the Lord. And as you give, God will bless you back many times over. So Lord, bless them as they give. Speak to their hearts, Lord, on the amount they should sow. And reward them, Lord, reward them for it. In Jesus' precious and holy great name. And bless them. Lord, that meet every need in their life financially. Bless their families financially. Bless their future financially. In Jesus' blessed name. And God's people said, Amen and Amen. And send me your prayer request. You can send it right on our website. I'll send your prayer request or go to benhin.org. Pastor Benny at benhin.org. It's, it's just so simple. Or send it in your comments when you, when you send your comments, people. Our staff, I myself read it often and pray, but our staff does it all the time. All right, make sure to share this teaching with your friends. Tomorrow I'll be with you again for another powerful, life-changing teaching from the Word of the Lord. And as you give, you can give on the platform you're watching me on. You can go to our website, benahindat.org, or text BHM45777. And become a partner, by the way. You, you can become a partner, daily partner with me, a uh, monthly partner with me, excuse me, monthly partner with me, and God will bless you for that too. All right, a million thanks, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.